Hello there. Who are you? Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the fictional TV boyfriends who gave us the ick in a major way. Beware of spoilers. I hear you've been badmouthing me to Kelly. All I did was remind her that you used to treat her badly. Well, that's your opinion, and it's her opinion, but it's not my opinion. Number 20, Damon Salvatore, The Vampire Diaries. I'm sorry if I make you uncomfortable. That's just not my intention. Yes, it is. Otherwise, you wouldn't put an alternate meaning behind everything you say. Damon is either a sassy, sarcastic king one wants to fix, or a toxic and manipulative villain who should have stayed far away from his brother Stefan's girlfriend. It pretty much depends on who you ask. We say Damon Salvatore isn't just a bad boyfriend. He rarely values any of the relationships in his life. Go ahead, wish me an eternity of misery. Believe me, you'll get over it. <laughs> The fact he can't back off his own sibling's partner, despite the fact that Stefan puts himself on the line for Damon several times, is proof of his endless selfishness. Of course, if he had backed off, we wouldn't have the series' big love triangle, and fans wouldn't swoon over those moments when he managed to not be totally awful. You should have met me in 1864. He would have liked it. Number 19, Dean Forrester, Gilmore Girls. Years later, fans still argue over which one of Rory Gilmore's boyfriends was the best. They might argue even more bitterly over which one was the worst. While Yale Man Logan and Bad Boy Jess have their fans and haters, most viewers would agree that Dean is not the right guy. What am I doing here, Rory? You're picking me up. I don't belong here. Not anymore. Though he can be caring and sweet, he's insecure long before Jess enters the picture. And his temper is troubling at times. Sure, it's not like Rory treats him that well either. They're both young when they first start seeing each other. But they also make some of their worst mistakes together. Let's not forget, he cheats on his wife. That's not a good boyfriend or husband. I hurt everybody. I hurt Lindsay, I hurt her parents, I hurt my parents. And now I'm back at home and you're in Europe with your grandmother and... And what the hell was I thinking? I mean, what am I doing? What's wrong with me? Number 18, Roy Anderson, The Office. Yes, Jim and Pam are endgame, and that's more than enough reason to dislike her first fiance. But Roy more than earns our hate. He's a neglectful boyfriend to Pam all throughout the first seasons and treats her and her office mates like garbage. Glad she has a friend at work she can get through the day with. Oh. She's done all bop, 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 you know, when she gets home. Yeah, I like talking to her too. <laughs> when it comes to showing interest in her art, life, or literally anything she says, Roy is missing in action, if not downright indignant. It isn't all bad, though. He actually has one of the biggest character arcs in the series. By the end, he's done a lot of growing up. When it comes to being Pam's partner, though, he's the worst. Just listen. No, I am listening. That's the problem. I'm listening. Don't yell. Don't yell? This is over. Number 17, Sheldon Cooper, The Big Bang Theory. Look, we love the adorably nerdy Sheldon Cooper as much as the next person, but you have to admit he isn't exactly prime boyfriend material. For one thing, he is very set in his ways, which can get hard to deal with. So are we celebrating anything special tonight? Oh, yes. Our relationship agreement specifies that the second Thursday of every month, or the third Thursday in a month with five Thursdays, is date night. In general, Sheldon can seem pretty egotistical and openly condescending to those he considers his close friends. Granted, he has made huge strides at being a better companion, but people with less patience than Amy would have walked away a long time ago. I agree. I move our relationship, terminate immediately. <laughs> Seconded. There being no objections. <laughs> the motion carries. Good day, Amy Farrah Fowler. Good day, Sheldon Cooper. Number 16, Lucas Scott, One Tree Hill. No matter how dreamy Chad Michael Murray is in the role, it doesn't really change the fact that his protagonist is often a morally self-righteous tool. Lucas Scott always expects more from the women in his life than he ever gives them. I love you, Brooke. I don't know how else to say it. How about how you show it? Cheating on his girlfriend Brooke with her best friend Peyton multiple times is bad enough. But that's not all. 
He also makes an obnoxious show of his goodness one too many times. Indeed, the fact that he constantly acts like a good guy or victim whenever any girlfriend tries to hold him accountable makes it hard to root for him. Hey. Number 15, Dr. George O'Malley, Grey's Anatomy. He's a touch more sensitive than a lot of his fellow interns, but that just makes his romantic faux pas even more upsetting. And George O'Malley messes up a lot. His constant pining after his friends, Meredith and Izzy, borders on obsessive. But when he finally does land a great girlfriend turned wife, he fumbles it so hard, it's a wonder he doesn't leave Seattle Grace immediately. Who am I to you, George? Am I your girlfriend? Am I somebody you mess around with? Do you even know? He betrays Dr. Callie Torres by instantly lying to her, taking her for granted, and ultimately cheating on her with Izzy. He also hides behind the fact that he isn't as callous and abrasive as men like Alex Karev. If anything, that just makes him more of a disappointment. Oh, Mally, you are a sad excuse for a man. Excuse me? I know you heard me. Number 14, Adam Sackler, Girls. This is another one of those situations where both of the people in a relationship are terrible for each other. All the characters' narcissism becomes a huge part of the entire narrative arc of Girls. But Adam's gracelessness and clear anger problems are on full display during some of Hannah's lowest moments. Look, I'm sorry about the album. I shouldn't have sent you such hostile songs. No, because you shouldn't have written me any songs, and you shouldn't be here right now." Somehow, his aggression and constant lack of consideration for her feelings make even Hannah's worst points seem forgivable at certain times. Even after he starts dating her friend Jessa, it seems like he was almost destined to be the guy you spend years trying to heal from. These things have an expiration date, okay? Six months or until someone stops having fun. That I'm having fun? No, you're not. You're like all secretly sad, and that's not cool for you, and it's not fun for me. Number 13, Fitzgerald Grant III, Scandal. Being president of the United States is a lot of pressure. Unfortunately, Fitz is as bad at politics as he is in relationships. Am I here to stroke your ego? Am I your cheerleader? Am I here to wipe your tears? Am I your nanny? Am I here to fight the bullies? Am I your bodyguard today? Maybe I'm here to make you feel good. Maybe I'm your dealer, or maybe I'm here to make you feel hot. Not only does he seem completely oblivious or unwilling to see just how much Olivia Pope has sacrificed to put him in the Oval Office, but his sense of entitlement stinks up all of Washington, D.C. It's why Olivia's attraction to him feels more like a bad habit than a true romance. It also adds an extra layer of grossness to him cheating on his wife with her. Olivia is as capable, clever, and underhanded as anyone in the Capitol. Hiding in his shadow is strategically advantageous for her. Unfortunately, his whiny entitlement and unearned heroism wears pretty thin. You think I don't want to be a better man? You think that I don't want to dedicate myself to my marriage? You don't think I want to be honorable to be the man that you voted for? Number 12, Dan Humphrey, Gossip Girl. Dan Humphrey may seem like a perfectly nice guy at first, yet he is anything but. We mean, and there's a massive spoiler alert here, so cover your ears if you don't want to hear it. He actually turns out to be Gossip Girl. How can he not make this list? Dan, I cannot believe you are the one responsible for all of this poison. The damage you've done to your friends, to your family, to your own sister. Dan is seemingly always causing issues, like, you know, full-on stalking people. Plus, the guy's always putting the blame on others, like when he slept with Serena and when he broke up with Blair. He puts on a nice guy facade while secretly ruining lives as Gossip Girl. And really, it doesn't get much worse than that. He, he cares more for a pretty blonde than he does his own future, and in the end, none of his friends are happy for his success. They all turn their backs on him, and he deserves it. Yeah, he does. Number 11, Nate Jacobs, Euphoria. The football jock's crimes are far too numerous, evil, and YouTube unfriendly to list here. But his constant mistreatment of his girlfriends, Maddie and Cassie, throughout the first and second seasons of the controversial HBO series just gets worse as it goes on. Can you imagine if I was sitting here with a gun, forcing you to accept my apology? You're scaring me. Yeah. It's kind of the point. Hateful and violent, 
Nate isn't afraid to lash out at anyone he dates. It's fair to say that he didn't exactly have the best chance at breaking the cycle, given his awful home life. Still, that's really no excuse for his hard behavior, especially when you consider how complicated everyone's life seems to be on this show. Needless to say, his behavior easily ranks him as the worst boyfriend in the bunch. I'll make sure you've given him some forethought. I know over the years you've lost some brain cells. I wouldn't want you to say something you might regret. Number 10. Chuck Bass, Gossip Girl not only is he a terrible on-again, off-again boyfriend to Blair Waldorf once they start seeing each other, but Chuck's constant manipulations make him one of the show's biggest overall villains. Indeed, the Upper East Side playboy proves himself to be a rotten, predatory person from the very first episode. Son of a... What the hell is your problem? It's a party! Things happen! Now, we know no one on Gossip Girl is a saint. And unfortunately, the show centering Chuck as one of the main characters means they have to be a little too forgiving of his crimes at times. But it's hard to downplay his terrible traits. He literally trades Blair for a hotel in one episode. And then he has the nerve to act like a jerk when she's rightfully upset about it? He's unhinged. You said you would stand by me through anything. This Blair is anything. I thought that the worst thing you would ever do would be to me. Number 9. Monel, Supergirl. Monel is a Daxamite prince who has come to Earth and eventually strikes up a relationship with Kara Danvers, aka Supergirl. He comes from a race full of bullies, which is not surprising given Monel's penchant for brutal honesty and his abusive personality. Not to mention the fact that he seems like a coward. I vouched for you at my place of employment. And then you had Eve do all of your work for you, and then you screwed her in the closet. You didn't apologize for that, and shocker, I apologize to you for trying to make you into a better person. I hear you. He makes Kara question herself and her role in society, and often blames his own problems on her rather than looking inward. Perhaps he means well, but Monel is one extremely flawed dude. I thought you'd changed. I really did, but you are still the same macho. Oh, here it is. Say it. Egotistic Daxamite? Yes, He's a Daxamite. Always been. Number eight, Jimmy Lishman, Shameless. We should get together, have lunch, just catch up. I'm seeing someone. So am I. Imported or domestic? Throughout Shameless, Jimmy Lishman has two major relationships, one with his true love, Fiona, and the other is with a mob boss's daughter named Estefania, who uses him to attain immigration status. He constantly switches between the two women, and while he seems devoted to Fiona, he cheats on her with Estefania on numerous occasions. He is also a consummate liar, and is not shy about lying directly to Fiona's face. He also hates family life with Fiona, and evolves into a whiny brat who cries about everything. He may mean well, but he's a real selfish bastard. What's important to me should be important to you. Look at us. We are literally digging up a body. How do you even compare our situations? Number 7. Ross Geller, Friends Let's face it, Ross Geller is a horrible boyfriend. For one thing, he said the wrong name at his and Emily's wedding. Hi, Ross. Take the Emily. Take the Rachel. Yeah, we understand that he was still in love with Rachel, but come on, it doesn't get much worse than that. He is also extremely quick to sleep with another woman after a fight and dumps girlfriends like they're pieces of garbage. We were on a break. That, for all I knew, could last forever. That, to me, is a break up. You think you're going to get out of this on a technicality? Look, I'm not trying to get out of anything, okay? I thought our relationship was dead. Well, you sure had a hell of a time at the wake. He's also a massive jerk towards Rachel, calling her ditzy and not respecting her career. And he's a needy, whiny, and possessive person who seems far too self-centered for his own good. Sorry, Ross. You may think you're a nice guy, but you're not. Yeah, we said it. Number 6. Barney Stinson – How I Met Your Mother For the first few seasons, Barney Stinson was a consummate ladies' man. He dressed well, bought drinks, and wooed women like there was no tomorrow. And while Barney later develops feelings, he is never the greatest boyfriend. What happened? 
Did I pass out? Oh my Please stop hitting me! He retains some semblance of misogyny, and in the early days with Robin, his careless, selfish, and relatively unloving attitude results in the pair devolving into horrible versions of themselves. He also blatantly lies to Nora about wanting kids and cheats on her with Robin, and later distrusts Quinn to such a huge extent that they break up. He may mean well, but Barney is not boyfriend material. If we really need something this complicated to get married, Yeah. Number 5. Danny Castellano, The Mindy Project Danny Castellano may mean well, but really, the guy is a huge jerk, and he makes for one problematic boyfriend. For one thing, his temper definitely needs to be reeled in. He has a very short fuse and is constantly fighting with Mindy over anything and everything. He also has a huge problem with commitment and manipulates those around him. Whenever you decide to do something, it's selfless. And whenever I decide to do something, it's selfish. You get to choose all the definitions. You are the judge, the jury, which just leaves me to be the sex executioner. Sorry, not the right time, but I had to. Despite this, he and Mindy get together, where in turn, he treats her with disrespect and tells her to give up her career. So yes, his heart is in the right place, but Dan is nevertheless a problematic dude. Is this the kind of guy that's not afraid to get into a fist fight at a Springsteen show because okay. someone really disrespects okay. him? I mean, he'll just put it out and okay. he'll take him down okay. right now there. Now you're just talking right about now. yourself. You're just talking about yourself. Number four, Ryan Howard, The Office. We like early Office Ryan. He's quiet and keeps to himself. And while he seems distant towards the obviously flirtatious Kelly, he seems like a good enough guy. And then he gets a little too big for his britches. Do you have a question, Kelly? Yeah, I have a lot of questions. Number one, how dare you? After crashing in the corporate job, Ryan convinces Kelly to break up with Daryl only to leave her behind when he goes to Thailand. Or more accurately, Fort Lauderdale. They are also extremely hostile towards each other throughout much of the series, and Ryan seems to openly hate being with her. Kelly isn't exactly a great girlfriend, but then again, Ryan isn't exactly a great boyfriend. It's one of TV's most incompatible relationships. And while we love watching it, we wouldn't recommend dating him. Oh, boo! Holy crap! Boo! What an boo! idiot. Boo! Man, you are toxic. Boo! You are toxic. Boo! Number three, Mr. Big. Sex and the City and And Just Like That. The notorious Biggie is arguably the quintessential mega jerk boyfriend. Throughout his relationship with Carrie, he is extremely distant with her, repeatedly failing to become more intimate. He has a big time commitment problem. Just tell me I'm the one. Come on, you don't, you don't have to tell your mother or the whole world. Just, just tell me. Now this commitment phobia wouldn't be so bad if it weren't for the fact that he marries another woman after only five months of dating and absolutely shatters Carrie's self-confidence. But wait, there's more. He also pines after her once he's married and the two eventually begin an affair. It's not working. I'm getting out. If you know anyone who's interested. They end up together, but at what cost? Perhaps it's no surprise that when he died on And Just Like That, no one was all that upset about it. Except maybe the people at Peloton. Classic John, just always a puzzle. At least with me. Number two, Larry Bloom, Orange is the New Black. Oh boy, where do we even start with Larry Bloom? While Larry is at first quite supportive towards Piper's life in prison, things quickly turn sour. He generally doesn't seem to care about her problems and even uses them as the basis for an article to further his own career. I wasn't expecting it, but I got the call last night. So apparently they pulled Randy's story about uh, the surge in home breweries in Brooklyn because The New Yorker is running one on the surge in home wineries in Brooklyn, so they ran mine instead. He also goes on radio shows to discuss the inmates and attain a semblance of fame himself. Plus, after he and Piper break up, He's intimate with her best friend in their house, which then causes the latter to leave her husband. Larry is nothing but a destructive force who will roll over anyone for his own happiness. I am heartbroken. And I do not know what to do. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Joe Goldberg – You No one on this list is quite as charming and dangerous as Joe Goldberg. He's a stalker and murderer who treats romantic relationships like undercover operations. He's a trained agent, efficient, enigmatic, and endearing in the way he burrows his way into his target's heart. The scariest thing is that in his own twisted mind, he thinks he's doing it all out of love. I know this is a lot. Honestly, I'm terrified sharing this with you. But if we're being honest, your life has been better since you met me. You just didn't know how or why. Until now. Beck, I love you. And loving someone means you will do anything for them. Being with Joe typically means meeting an early end. Whether it's because the woman finds out all he's done to manipulate her like Beck, or because she tries to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him like love, entanglements with him usually end badly. If one does manage to escape like Marion, it won't be without serious trauma. He's not you, like you're, you're just a good man who did a bad thing. You're a murderer, Joe. Who's your pick for worst TV boyfriend? Weigh in in the comments. Go, oh, I'm telling you, before I take it all back, all right? Just go. Go. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.